Hi, my name is Hayden Speck. I'm a fifth year PhD candidate at the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology at UCLA. I study the evolution of development in jellyfish. So this is looking at how their life cycle has evolved, as well as how changes in their developmental regime can impact their overall body structure. I don't really have much connection to The Little Mermaid. I know I watched it as a kid because my family had it on VHS, so we could watch it at home. And I know I did do that, but I don't remember too many specifics beyond like most of the songs and stuff like that. I think that if a mermaid were to interact with a jellyfish, it would be to use it as some sort of defense or some sort of weapon. Many fishes have symbiotic relationships with jellyfish where their young live in and around the jellyfish and the jellies effectively acts as protection for them against any sort of predation. Octopuses have also been known to carry around jellyfish and researchers think that this is using the jellyfish as some sort of way to stun the prey of the octopus and make it easier to catch. I don't see jellyfish as a particularly good candidate for being a sidekick. Uh, for one thing, their tentacles are designed to entangle anything that comes near them more or less. So you're going to get a lot of unintentional stingings. But then there's sort of like a practical animation aspect that would be problematic. So jellyfish don't have heads, they don't have faces, and so that limits how expressive you could be with them, I imagine, as an animator. Um, they do have eyes, but they have eight sets of eyes that go around the rim of their umbrella. And if you were to try to, you know, Disney-fy it and blow up those eyes and make them big and expressive, I don't know how cute that would be. Jellyfish are pretty alien to the everyday experience of a human. And ancient peoples didn't really know what to do with jellyfish when they looked at them. And you can see why there is this level of confusion when you look at a jellyfish. There are not a lot of obvious commonalities between a jelly's anatomy and a human's anatomy. You can't see a heart, you can't see a brain, that sort of stuff. But that worldview is pretty limiting in some respects. Uh, jellyfish actually have a lot of similarities with other animals. It's just at the molecular and developmental level that they have them. We've found evidence that uh, jellyfish can actually go from their medusa stage directly to their polyp stage, which would be the equivalent of a butterfly turning back into a caterpillar. The public should care about jellyfish for a number of different reasons, but the main one is that the conditions we're creating in the oceans are becoming much more favorable to large blooms of jellyfish, which will have very bad impacts for aquaculture and people who depend upon the ocean for their livelihood. I wouldn't want to change places with a jellyfish, and I have a feeling that if given the choice, a jellyfish wouldn't want to change places with me either. From a jellyfish's perspective, humans are probably pretty bad animals. We're really inefficient with our energy compared to a jellyfish. For instance, our brains are great for thinking and complex tasks and stuff like that, but they do take up about 20% of our body's overall energy supply. Meanwhile, jellyfish are able to sense their environment and move without a brain using a simple neural network that is much less energetically costly to maintain. I'm Hayden Speck. Thanks for watching.